How's everyone doing tonight? 922 Crappy, how's it going, man? What's up, Paul? Hope all is well. I hope everything looks good and sounds good. I'm in the garage again, so <clears throat> hopefully everything everything looks good. Vicky, how's it going? Hope you and Fredo are doing well. So, so yeah, y'all let me know if uh, if anything. Awesome, awesome, Paul. Appreciate it. Hugo, what's going on, man? Byron, there he is. What's up, man? <clears throat> Still have a little bit of a cough, so so y'all bear with me on that. Got some great stuff to show y'all. I don't plan on being on here a long time today, everyone. Just kind of want to touch base. I hadn't been on in a few weeks, so just want to kind of touch base with everyone, let everyone know what I've been finding in the in the creeks and fishing in general. So awesome, nine twenty-two. Vicky, we are good. Thank you, Fredo's taking a shower. Awesome, man. Byron, me too. This is some crazy, crazy weather, man. And I think we're supposed to get more crazy weather. They're saying maybe even some snow on Friday, which is just crazy. It snowed before in March. It actually kind of snowed this morning a little bit or sleeted or I'm not sure. It was big chunks of ice um, this morning a little bit. But it snowed before pretty good in March, I remember, uh, several years back. So it's not totally out of the ordinary, but it definitely is not welcome, at least this year for me. I'm ready to get on some fish. Fish are trying to bite. It's just this this weather just keeps going up and down, up and down. And we don't have any rain. And what rain we do get is freezing cold. Like that rain last night was cold. So it's not doing anything to help us as far as the bite goes. So it'll straighten out eventually, Byron. We just gotta we just gotta be patient, man. As hard as that is. For me especially, you know. Paul, they were 12 foot deep today under the docks. Got into a handful on one dock. Nice, man. I'm actually really planning on trying to do some dock shooting videos pretty soon. And especially if this weather keeps being crazy like it is. I think that would be a good plan of attack for me for, for the near future. But So I got some... Uh, so later this week, I got a white bass video uh, from the bank. Got into some uh, last week, not a ton, but enough to where um, I did good, what I would consider good, and uh, I'm going to put that video out for y'all, so I hope y'all enjoy that. Be on the lookout for that kind of later in the week, I think. Oh, thanks, Paul, man. I hope so. As soon as... Terry, what's going on, man? Barfly Fishing. Um, as soon as I get... As soon as I can get some time, I, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I was actually off today, but I wasn't able to, to get out and fish, so, um, as soon as I can get some time, and that time lines up with the weather, I know I can find some fish. Um, Mark Williams, what's going on, man? Thanks for being here, Mark. So, as soon as those two things line up, I know I'll be able to get out there and look for some fish, and, and hopefully find some with enough time, so, just gotta stay after it. That's kind of the name of the game this, this time of year is... The more you can be on the water, the better, because you can stay up on these, you know, stay on top of these fish and where they move in and out with these, with these fronts and stuff. Ernesto, what's going on, man? Thanks so much, everyone, for, for everyone being here. I know I'm kind of inconsistent with these lives, but, you know, I just, I hadn't fished and I hadn't really had anything to talk about. So I'm, uh, I'm glad I was able to get out and, and do a couple things and, and do that at least you know for the meantime so i can get back out again dennis got your sorry i'm late any word on the white bass in the creeks dennis yeah they're in the creeks um some more than others and they're gonna it's gonna take some work dennis it's not on by any means but it has started and there are fish in the creek coming out later in the week uh for that right um that white bass run First one, I've looked a couple times and just hadn't found enough to where I wanted to put a video out. So I finally did. I'm going to put that out soon. Tina Ladybug, thanks for being here. Thump Chump, what's up, man? Uncle Bill, what's going on? Hope all's well down that way. 
Oh, Paul, yeah, I appreciate that. Y'all, if y'all could uh, leave a thumbs up, that really helps me out YouTube-wise. Slap Buster, there he is. I was watching that uh, that Major League Fishing um, tournament today over there. Got a lot of spotted bass over there, Slab Buster. So, man, thanks, Slab. Yeah, that was that was a great trip, y'all. So that that trip was kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say spur of the moment, but it just so happened that I had a little more time that day, and I wanted to just try it. You know, I don't actively hunt big fish like that. And something I wanted to try. And sure enough, I was able to get out there and, and catch my biggest crappie ever. So definitely can't complain. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just really thankful I was able to get out there. Um, I don't think I'm going to be going out there very, very, um, very long, very often just because it's, it's pretty good drive for me. And <clears throat> so... Dennis, great. Thanks for the info. I'll send anything I get. New job, so I can't fish as much as I want to. Oh, man, Dennis, yeah. I know how that is. You just got to get out there when you can. Slab Buster, it was on a... Uh, oh, what was it? Smith Lewis Lake or Smith Lake or something like that. I think it was Smith Lewis Lake. Lewis Smith Lake or something. Something along those lines, Slab Buster. <laughs> Paul just left me up. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. Stephen Hawkins, what's going on, man? Hawkins. So yeah, that 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 day was just crazy. Um, I had a feeling that it was gonna be good, but I did not think it was gonna be that good. So, man, I did thump chump. I got lucky on that. It doesn't work like that all the time. So, but I really, 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 really enjoyed. Um, just getting out of the getting out of the city, going to a place I'd never been, and you know, just just figuring out fish, catching black crappie like that is, is so fun. And I really, really hope I can get out there more often like that and travel a little bit for you guys and uh, try and mix it up. You know, I get kind of tired of fishing around the Metroplex, um, especially these days. You know, this these creeks are always busy; they're always trashed. Um, it's just sometimes I, it's good just to get away from the city and go you know, go east or go west or north or just get away from the city. And that was that, that was kind of that day for me just to get away. And we'd really love to have more days like that. So, <clears throat> uh, Slab Buster, yeah, it's a deep clear water, Lake Smith or Lewis Smith Lake. Yep, that's, yeah, that's it. Brian Fields, Northeast Indiana in the house. Thanks so much, Brian, for being here. I appreciate you. Yeah, they were catching some some big spots. Um, I'm I'm really into that that format of uh, of fishing. That's just such a cool format. You know, I'm a numbers guy myself. Like I said, I don't go chase these these big fish, big crappie very often. And and I was uh, lucky enough to do that. I mean, I even bought a scale for that. So going forward, if I catch a big one, I'll weigh it for y'all and see. I uh, I wanted to make sure I got that weight on film for you guys because. I know some don't believe how big the crappie are here and, and don't believe if I were to, well, this fish is three pounds, you know, you would never know that. So I wanted to put that on a scale for y'all. That way y'all know I'm not misleading. But speaking of that big fish, so this right here is the jig that, that caught that fish. Um, was luckily fishing open water and uh, got to uh, to not lose it. So that's that's great. I love when that happens. But this is the jig right here. White and chartreuse with red eyes. Um, Y'all know me. Um, I don't push products or you know companies unless I genuinely like their their products. Um, B and M is no different. I would be buying B and M uh, stuff myself. Um, I just truly love their rods and love their their gear. So that's the the same. Um, Waterland Co. as well, you know, their, their sunglasses and apparel is great. Um, and so this is the same, you know, Camo Joe, Camo's Custom Hand Ties. Um, he, he really, really is a longtime supporter of the channel. And he provides me with, with jigs. So, and great jigs too. If y'all, 
if y'all are ever in the market for a hand tied jig i know there's tons of guys out there that tie jigs but you know in that last video you can see these jigs work great um so these right here are some of the jigs he sent me um great looking jigs i i really i'm a really big fan of these hand tied jigs especially like early when the water's cold or when those fish get finicky i mean look at that jig right there that's a sweet looking jig can't wait to use that one um and some of these are real cool you know some of these got uh let's see if i can get this one out some of these got snake eyes look at that look how cool that is all sickle hooks you know high quality stuff so you know as always if, if y'all could support those that support me um support the channel um i wouldn't be sending y'all there if there if it wasn't great stuff so uh, camo joe's um you can check them out on facebook camo's custom uh hand ties and yeah tell them tell them kids sent you i really appreciate that <clears throat> byron you know i love getting out of the metroplex one week and i'm gonna get a lake house on cedar creek nice byron man Thump chub, I want to do that too. Man, me too. Just spend, or go to like, even like Palestine or, or Fork or, or somewhere like that, <coughs> that it's kind of too far. Cedar Creek's not too far, but you know, Palestine's a little further where it's kind of an all, it's kind of an all weekend thing. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can make that a weekend trip and get out there and really, you know, spend some time looking, it really makes a big difference. Xavier, North Texas Fisherman, what's going on, man? I don't know, man. What's, you tell me what's the word. Oh, thanks, Slab. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's it's one of those ones, you know, I told I told my wife, I was like, if that fish would have ate one more minnow before I caught it, it would have probably been three pounds. You know, it's crazy. It's it's pretty crazy. Xavier, hey, Anthony, let's get together on a fork. I stay at a camper when I'm out there. Oh, nice. Yeah, man, I, for sure. I, I did not know that. Yeah, that that's great, man. That That makes it so much easier. To, to get out there and, and not have to worry about coming back. Oh, no, man. What? Man, I'm sorry to hear that, Xavier. Man, what is it? Was it a, a leak or, or a hydraulic leak? Or did the... What happened, man? That's, that's terrible, man. Hey, there he is, Pescando con Roger. Oh, that, so that reminds me. I'm going to give a little update on, on, on Roger's boat as well. I, I just This just came to me. Yeah, Camo's custom uh, hand ties. Um, my wife just put that in there. Check him out on Facebook. But So, Roger, you know, y'all donated. Um, this was probably, I forget when this was. This was before I got sick. So, probably like two or three months ago. <clears throat> you know, we, we came together and... Uh, Hopefully it's just my helm at the console. Hopefully, man, man, that that's that's rough. Um, so so you know, I came together on here, me and Fredo, to try and get some money, um, you know, donations from you guys to to help put him in a boat. You know, kind of like I was helped um, with with Barfly. Um, you know, I I really appreciated that, and I wanted to return the favor. You know, that's just that's just how I am. Um, I don't want, you know. Any anything for it. I just I just want him to to get off of that um, that paddleboard because it's dangerous and you know I know how it's like fishing off of a tube of a one man pontoon. That stuff's rough and it's rough to put good content out. So I just wanted to return the favor and so he got the, he got his boat running. Y'all be sure to go over and check out his channel, y'all. He's got great videos in that boat. Um, I saw he, he was catching some monster crappie a couple days ago. Um, and y'all be sure to go check him out. Great content, and now he's in a, a nice boat out there catching crappie. So I'm, I'm so thankful for y'all. Um, so if y'all want to go see that, and I'm going to eventually get with him, we'll get out there, you know, fish and, and kind of hang out and all that. Just once I get some time away and get that, you know, get our schedules lined up. But in the meantime, if y'all want to go over and check out, you know, what boat he got and see that it's up and running and that, you know, the money did go to that, Y'all be sure to go check him out. Pescondo con Roger. Paul, you and that one man pontoon was epic, man. Yeah, that those were the days. I mean, those were those were some struggle days. You know, I hear I hear so much of it nowadays. I, I know I've talked about this before, but um I've talked, you know, just 
everyone has their limitations, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's really not. You know, I understand some, I mean, most people can't just go out and just go buy a boat. You know, that's just not realistic, and I totally get that. But, you know, I've always been of the mindset, you know, like it, it just depends on how bad you want it. You know, what do you want to do to go through all that? How bad do you want to make it? How bad do you want to make film, you know, good videos? How bad do you want to catch fish? How bad do you want to learn? And there's options out there, you know, like me. At the time, I did not have money for a boat. I didn't have money for for a kayak, for, for really anything like that. <clears throat> so I just had to go, <clears throat> excuse me, I just had to go get a, a one-man pontoon or a float tube. 100, 150 bucks, cheap way to get on the water. It's a pain, I'll be honest, but you can fish bridges effectively. You can fish, you know, wade, you know, in shallow water when those fish are spawning. Um, there's there's options you can do. And, and I just want to say, you know, it's just, don't let your, your circumstances or your limitations, you know, truly be your limitations, you know, figure out ways around it. Um, one man pontoon, um, float tube, just do whatever you have to do to get on that water. <laughs> yeah, man, it's going to take some time, but, but man, you're wearing those crappie out, buddy. Yeah, he does. Roger makes some great jigs as well. That's true. I forgot. So if you're looking for plastics as well, um, Barfly makes some plastics, and then as well as uh, Roger as well. Oh, no, R Roger. <laughs> I saw that part, but I didn't know it was for six hours. Oh, man, that's rough. Pog, I remember the first videos I saw of yours, you had flippers on, and I was like, oh, what? You were wearing out them crappie, and I'm like, this dude is awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I hope... I hope a lot of people um, think the same way, you know, I think some might think, oh, this guy's crazy, you know, or something like that, so. Slapbuster Coosa River Crappie Club Tourney, Saturday on Neely, 1302 won it, and Big Fish was a 2.28 black nose. Nice, man. That's a big black nose. We don't catch black nose that, that big here very often. Indiana Chris, hey, kid, thanks for being here, Indiana Chris. <laughs> 409 outdoors i said a prayer for your safety every time i seen that too i appreciate that you know and that's one thing too so like i always always wore my life jacket um no matter what i always had my life jacket and i still do in the kayak um you know like i'll take the i'll take the life jacket off when i'm in the boat actively fishing on the, on the deck and stuff when i'm when i'm running I, I i try to keep that that life jacket on and uh, especially when I'm in the kayak or when I was in the tubes and stuff like that. I mean, every single time I had it on, you just never know. Slab buster only caught one black nose my whole life there. Had no idea there was one over two pounds. Yeah, that's, that's a big black nose slab. That really is. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, about the bite, too, around here in DFW. What I've been finding, at least. Um, Paul, this is the first... This year is the first one I've caught a black nose. Never caught them before. They're so fun. I wish there was more of them. Um, they're they're mean. I mean, they'll fight. They'll about pull you in the water. Black crappie in general will. So, you know, talk about the bite here in DFW. As far as the white bass goes, um, they're in the creeks. As I mentioned before, they're in the creeks. They're not, you know, really really heavy in the creeks yet. Just been too cold and hadn't had a warm warm rain and, and enough of a rain for that matter. But um, I, uh, I really expect that bite to get good here the next week or two. Um, once we get this weather calmed down and get some warm days and fish will still push in there pretty good. So they're in the creeks, the white bass are, you know, just get out there and look. It might take you some looking. You might have to creek hop two or three different creeks, but you will find some in the creeks and it's just, it's just barely starting. I almost really wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't even call it, it started. I mean... It started, but it hasn't. Not fully yet, but, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll definitely change. Kip Wright, uh, Axton's host attorney on Saturday on four, took 17 and changed the win at 2.8 big fish. Wow, yeah, that's some big, I mean, y'all, everyone knows that lake's got some monsters. That lake's got some monsters. 
Uh, Xavier, dude, the bite has been wishy-washy just like the weather. Yep, and that's the spawn MO right there, man, as you know. It's just back and forth weather, back and forth fishing. And again, that's why I'm not guiding right now. I don't have time to, to stay on these fish enough for you. And it's just horrible weather. I mean, you know, 40 mile an hour winds one way, 40 mile an hour the other. Fish are here and, and gone the next day. I just don't have time to do that. Um, and I don't want to waste y'all's time. You know, I'm, I'm, if we don't do good on a guide trip, I'm going to discount you. So it, it doesn't do me any good to go out there in bad conditions um, or bad bite and, and chance that with you guys. So, uh, let's see. Paul, I've been fishing nearly 40 plus years. I only caught one. It was nine inches, man. Yeah, fish the lake. Uh, the thump chump says fish the lake by him. It's got a bunch. Yeah, some lakes got more than others, no doubt. Lurb, good evening. Thanks for being here. Barfly, I was told today they're chasing fast moving crappie open water, chasing old tricks mounted live scope. Lots, but all scattered through the water column. Yep. <coughs> yep. Yeah, Xavier's supposed to freeze, man. They're saying it might even snow again on Friday. Some crazy weather. A week ago, I caught crappie 28 foot deep on Tawakani. Yep. And so that's the thing with the, with the crappie bite. As far as the crappie bite goes, I... I know there's some fish spawning. Um, I know that. I know there's in there. I know what areas they're spawning in. I just have not had the time to go. Excuse me. And like I said, today I was off, but I couldn't get out. And even if I could, you know, it's cold and it's sleeting and snowing this morning. It's just bad timing. The only time of the year when I'm when I watch the not so much the, the barometric pressure or anything like that, but I, I pay attention to the weather more than others is the spring. I am not going to go actively look for spawning fish in bad conditions because I know I'm up against, you know, I'm, I'm in a corner. I'm not going to go look for those fish in a foot of water when it's 30 degrees out, you know, after a bad front. I'm just not going to do that. Now, it's not to say you can't catch any, but I want my odds, the odds in my favor when I go out there looking for those spawning fish. So... <clears throat> No more snow, says uh, says Paul. Man, I hope not too, man. I, I'm done with winter. That that creek bite and that jig and bobber bite and all that in the winter was good and fun, but I'm ready for some some sandies and some hybrids and spawning fish and and sooner or later, you know, we're going to be post spawn and I'll be running trips again and on the on the main lake. Yep, same here, says Slab Buster. Bite good one day and gone the next, or they have lockjaw. Yeah, it's, it's true, man. Uh, Xavier's right. They, these fish will be spawning in the May, especially this year. Um, and on my home lake, they spawn in June. So I don't see why this year would not be any different. They're going to be late spawners for sure just because it's been such a... It hasn't been a cold winter, but it got cold late, if that makes sense. So it's colder later than it should be. It should already be warm. Um, so it's just going to push it back, you know, a little bit. <clears throat> hey, there you go, Fredo. <laughs> I'm zestfully clean, says Fredo. Uh, Capturas, hey, how's it going? Uh, Xavier, I was out on Fork this weekend bass fishing and caught a few females that had spawned out already. Man, that's crazy, man. A bit of square bill I was throwing. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it, especially east. You know, because this week was, I mean, well, this last week was pretty warm. I would not doubt if some did spawn out. Well, it's been low 80s rain coming this week. High 43, they said, low 25. Yep, that's about how it is here on a Friday slab. It's coming that way a little later. Larry, for white bass in the creeks, do you ever do any good on these cold days? Or do the bite usually die, fish move out? Larry, that's a good question. So... So for me, white bass are not as wishy-washy back and forth as crappie are in the spawn. White bass will tend to, they tend to not be effective at, affected as much. So like if it was me I, and I could go white bass fishing today, I would go. I don't, I don't think it would hurt the bite that much, especially today when, um, you know, it was warm yesterday. And so that, um, 
that water hasn't had time to cool off. Now, by the end of the week, after a few days, a few cold nights and a few cool days, I think it'll be tougher then than it will be now, um, as, as odd as that sounds, but that, that water temp does affect these fish. So just because it gets cold one day doesn't mean they're not gonna bite as much. They're, that water takes, that, there's a lag with that water, um, with the air temp and that water temp. That water is gonna take longer to warm up, it's gonna take longer to cool off. So it definitely um, takes some time for that water to, to um, be affected. Saw a 60 degree water temp. Yeah, man, I would not doubt it. Um, it was 53 or 54 when I was out of beginning of last week. So, you know, warm, a warm week. Yeah, it's going to jump it up there. Raul Mendez, what's going on? Happy to see you in action. Thanks so much, Raul. Hope you're doing well. Andy Chase, do you believe in the barometric pressure when it comes to fishing for white bass in the creeks? Man, I don't believe in barometric pressure at all. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I... I there's so many other factors that factor into where these fish are and how they bite and all that, that the barometric pressure, I don't think, I don't think that affects them. That, that's something that they can offset, you know. If that pressure's real high, they can go a little deeper or a little shallower and offset that pressure. Um, and they got to eat, you know. I mean, no matter what, they have to eat. Now, I do think on high, I personally, I like high pressure days because that pushes fish down it's typically you know bright and sunny pushes fish into the brush and the bridges into the shade of docks things like that so i typically like high pressure because it puts them where i'm looking on those days as low pressure it's usually cloudy before a storm you know so those fish tend to roam a little bit more but other than that i don't really look at the uh the white bass or the um, pressure for the for the white bass you know white bass are white bass are not like crappie they're they're not finicky fish i don't think um you know nine times out of ten you get a bait in front of a sandy it's gonna bite it it's that's just especially when they're in the creek spawning it's just it's just what it is slab bus fixing to give me a sailboat can't afford gas sorry to bring that up man yeah um yeah it's i don't know i don't want to be i don't want to be um i don't know how to you know, not like arrogant or anything like that, but I'm lucky enough to um, to where the, the YouTube really helps with that, you know. I can I can go a little further, um, you know, a little more gas, and I would go anyway, to be honest. I wouldn't, personally, I just, you know, I get to go fishing like my escape. It, it's, worth, it's, it's worth it to try and figure out how to make that happen, but luckily the YouTube kind of offsets that. The money there kind of helps with gas and, and stuff like that, and and so that that stuff helps me a ton but yeah it's getting bad it's getting bad hey mark spurgeon thanks for being here just walked in hit that like button let's go fishing sounds good man i appreciate you hitting that that thumbs up yeah we'll get out there man we got to get that figured out yep thump trump says gas prices would find the, the finalize my decision to get a yak slab yep that's that's the thing, you know, I see that a lot of, you know, yeah, kayak is cheaper. But for me, that the boat, my boat doesn't use that much gas. It's the truck, you know, that's that's really what it is. That truck guzzles gas, but. Let's see, slab, I've been too busy, couldn't go this weekend. Now next weekend when I can go, major cold front. Yep, that's how it is with me, man. I got two days off this week, and both days are the coldest days of the week. <laughs> And like I said, I couldn't go today, but the next time I can go, it's the coldest day of the week and of the month, probably, honestly. It's time for you to catch a new PB for you. Oh, yeah, man. PBs every week. <coughs> Mark, I would love that. How high does the price of gas have to be until you, uh, we start cutting back on fishing? That's a good question. You know, like, honestly, man, I don't know. I don't see a, a price that would make me just not want to go, to be honest. Um, whether I got to take the kayak, whether I got to walk the bank, whatever, man, I would figure out something. I, I got to fish. It's in it's in my blood, y'all. I can't, I can't not fish, so. Slap busher, oh yeah, if it's five bucks. I'm going if I don't I'll be cranky and ill. Yep, man, that's I know 
I know my wife can probably say it. She'll probably say the same thing. If I don't go, I get cranky. I got to go. All right, guys, I got to get going. Take, take it easy, kid. I'll catch y'all later. All right, Paul, y'all, you take it easy, and, and thanks for being here and dropping in, and we'll catch you in the next one, man. It is. It is it is getting getting crazy. Um, So a little story today. Like I said, I was off, so I was out running some errands, and when a matter of 30 minutes, um, I uh, – I drove by a gas station and it was 359 and then I drove back by it like less than 30 minutes later it was 389 so it jumped 30 cents in 30 minutes <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Yep, see I get very cranky. But, you know, as always too I wanted to say um, you know, so as the channel grows and we're growing great, you know, thank you everyone, you know, as always if you can if you can share the videos that I put out, share the channel if you have anyone that you know that rec that likes crappie fishing or white bass fishing, fishing in general, um, you know, just just let them know about the channel, and that that would help me out a ton. And uh, that kind of thing helps me grow. The, the The more I grow, the more I'll be able to branch out and you know go here, go there. I've I really got some good plans that that I would love to be able to do one day. And sorry, y'all. I hope to get there one day and, and make that happen. So. Kid, Mark Spurgeon, okay, we'll hook up the boat to the mules and pull that boat to the lake. There's no way that I'm not going fishing. There you go, Mark. That's right. If I got to if I gotta pull this boat with my hand to get it to the boat ramp, that's what we're going to do. I'll have, I'll have little man helping pull. We'll get everyone to pull this boat to the lake. We're going to get there one way or the other. Xavier, bro, I saw the same thing. Yeah, man, it's crazy how quick it jumped. Thump chump, I thought about the yak with a hundred pound thrust trolling motor. There you go, man. You're gonna be waking in that in that yak, slab buster. You're gonna have to go you're gonna have to no wake through no wake zones. <laughs> Vicky says the same thing. You know, what do they say? Desperate times call for desperate measures. You know, you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to get, you know, get to the water. Then your upper body won't hurt. Yep. That's true. Ski behind it. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> That's funny. It's uh I've seen um I've seen some memes like that float around where you know they're I think I've seen one where like a bike was pulling a uh, a boat in a boat trailer and and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty funny. It really is. Well, yeah, y'all, I don't really have a lot else to talk about. You know, just kind of want to touch base <clears throat> and and let y'all know how the bite was and and all that. Slab, I know you going, kid. I've seen you out there and one man with flippers on you. You got to want it. Yep. I'll, I'll break the... the uh, do I have the tube? I don't remember if I even have the tube anymore, but I'll go buy a tube if I have to. That's what I got to do. Gonna call home. Good to see you. Take care. Good to see you, Uncle Bill. You take it easy, man. Yeah, Fredo, man. It really, you know, it really is. It's never, I mean, it's never a good time to have it in the shop, but it definitely helps right now because one, the fishing's not that great. It's hit or miss. Two, the weather's horrible. And, you know, the gas prices are obviously pretty high. So that definitely, definitely not a bad time. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of keep it short today, you guys. I just wanna <clears throat> touch base, like I said. And Mark Spurgeon, I live by drove by the lake yesterday and fish were on the bank drinking beer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, these fish are ready to spawn, you guys. So if you can get some warm days, get out there and look shallow, you will be surprised what you can find out there with those crappie. Those crappie will pull in real quick, and they'll also go back out real quick. So. So I need to go from a 90 horse to a 40 horse. There you go. Hugo, great live as always. Congratulations again on your PB. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Hugo. I hope you and, and the family are doing well, man. Today they they had a fire going. <laughs> there you go. 
Uh, Lurb, take it easy. Keep on the fish. Thanks, Lurb. You have a great one. So, yeah, you guys, you know, just thanks again for all the support. Um, everything, I really appreciate it. And be on the lookout for that, that white bass video at the end of the week. I'm not sure what day I'm going to put it out, but I'll put it out at the end of the week. And hope you all enjoy that. <clears throat> We're going to hopefully get out there and get on some more of these fish. Um, you know, that's the plan. Get on these fish and uh, get some videos out for you guys. Yeah, if y'all, you know, as always, if y'all want, you know, the Super Chat's there. Um, Cash App is there. The wife put that in there. Um, and let's see, I think I missed something. Romeo, como esta? Bien, tu? Uh, slab. Notice the dog was trying to bloom here. Yeah, slab. So there are some trees blooming here. There's actually some that are fully green already, but it's supposed to be 20 something degrees here on Friday. I don't know what, the, I don't know how that's, gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, how that's going to work, but we'll see. But yeah, you know, that, that donation stuff's always there if you want. Um, it just goes right back to the channel. It's always appreciated as always. It's never expected, but always appreciated. Yes, sir. It says Raul. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. You guys, like I said, look out for that white bass video at the end of the week. And hopefully fingers crossed, have a bunch of videos coming out real soon. So y'all stay tuned for that. Thanks for the support and we'll catch you in the next one. Slab, yeah, they're in for a shock Saturday here. Yeah, they are. Yep. And then right back up. Fredo, that's right. 70 degrees. All right, you guys, take it easy. Catch you on the next one. Y'all be safe.